Welcome to Jurisprudence, Lesson 36. Sir John William Salmond, an English jurist who lived between 1862 and 1924. Why is this important to us? It is indeed very important to us, first, because understanding the jurisprudence by Salmond can be telling when only we understand the context in which he lived, that is, the eve and the culmination of the legal positivism that was initiated majorly by Professor Jeremy Bentham and extended by the followers of Bentham thinking, that is, Professor John Austin. From here, we can deduce one important thing, that if today we claim that the jurisprudence is systematic, the study of law is systematic, all this is the achievement by the work of Judge John William Salmond. Sir John William Salmond engages himself in the definition of the jurisprudence and the definition of jurisprudence. He engages himself as well in the definition of law and the definition of the law. Let us again put into context the definition of law by Salmon. I quote, Law is a body of principles recognized and applied by the state in the administration of justice or the body of rules recognized by the state and acted on by the court of justice. But given this kind of definition, we can take into account the understanding of law from the legal positivism, that is law as posited, law as a product of the human society. Second, we take into account the sovereign, the role of the state to recognize and apply the principles. But when we say recognize, does it mean the enactment? Still, the work of the legislator here is rendering the legislator one who is writing the law but relying on the facts, law and facts. The legislator doesn't write the law in a vacuum. He writes the law in a reality full of facts, happenings, and in this case, wonderful writing and careful reading of his book on jurisprudence or the theories of the law is really very important and still considered after so many decades when this book was published in the year 1902. In this case, we find Judge Salmon, our teacher of the jurisprudence, which he divided into three branches, the systematic jurisprudence, the historical jurisprudence, and the critical jurisprudence. Also, we find in his description and definition of the law, many other areas he has dealt with, different theories, the theories of rights by Salmon, the theories of duties and obligations, and also the coerciveness, the theory of the sovereign and how the law gets its authority. Also from the definition and the work of Salmon, we can see clearly the distinctions between different factions of law. For instance, the law of England versus the foreign law. And that is the jurisdiction 
and jurisdictional understanding of the law. Here, Solomon is helping us with the semantic problem, law and the law, in which law is abstract idea, abstract concept of law, and that can only be seen in theories and principles as explained by Salmon. Whereas the law, the law is referring to a specific set of law. That is why we say a body of principles. For instance, the law of England, the English legal system, the law of Kenya, for instance, the law of India, the law of United States of America, the law of Canada, every jurisdiction or every territory has got its own laws and that is what we refer to as the law. But when we say law, then we are still working in the realm of theories of abstract ideas, but not concrete reality of law. The state recognizes and applies the law, but recognizing the law does not mean that the legislator has got a blank check while writing the law. The legislator writes the law backing himself with the facts in the society. And in that case, the law follows the facts, but also the facts shape the law. And he is the one who looks at the animus factum of the law. That is the spirit of the law that is founded within the fact. There cannot be any claim on the breach of law if that law indeed does not exist or it does exist but does not relate to any fact. Appropriately, the same Salmon is seeking to address the question of too much law can amount to some too much injuries that is expressed in Latin, sumum use est summa injuria. That means simply the insistence, sorry, over insistence on the law, the legal framework, can as well create some harms and injuries in the society. By doing so, it is a question of addressing the rigidity of the common law and how he looks at the doctrine of equity. Sir John William Salmond is actually indeed very clear in his words. When he looks at the second component of his definition of law, that is, the administration of justice, then already he is looking at the purpose of law. Law as a subject has got a clear purpose, and that is the administration of justice. Why does he think so? He thinks so because of the theory of interests. The society has got different individuals with different interests and those interests from time to time do collide and that's the conflict of interests and it is the mandate of the state to bring justice to remedy such conflicts in this case justice or judge Salomon is also looking at the harms, the wrongs, crimes, and civil offenses. The same Salmon is distinguishing between the civil law, that's the law of the land, the law of the state, from the criminal law. That is the law that creates criminal offenses or deals with criminal justice. He is also looking at the administrative law as well as the tort law, the civil wrongs that people from time to time end up creating. The same Salmon has written on the law of contract. 
that is very candid in his work. A careful reading and a thorough understanding of the jurisprudence of Sir John William Salmond is enabling us to engage with the systematic jurisprudence, systematic study and the thoughts around the jurisprudence that still remain relevant, pragmatic and explain to us the sense of law. Salmond is a positivist who looks at law from its scientific perspective. Law is a science and Sir John William Salmond is a positivist, one of those who have defined the jurisprudence to us and whose legacy we still abide with if we look at the, the practice of law in the Republic of Kenya, the practice of the justice system, the constitutional law, and the force of law. All the understanding around the law has got so much to do with the theories of law from Sir John William Salmond in terms of the rights, uh, obligations, duties, punishment, coercion, and many other things that we relate to law that are regarded by Sir John William Salmond. We can again appreciate Judge Salmon by admitting that he is the one who believed in the following phrase Sumum use est soma injuria. That is a Latin expression meaning too much insistence on the law is an injury in itself. Too much law can create some injuries. And in that case, Salmon is addressing the question of the rigidity of the common law, the rigidity of the statutory law and the legal framework that is seen as absolute in the adjudication and the work of the judge. In this case, he is in support of lesser rules, lesser principles that enable the justice system to interpret and apply itself. Remember, his work on the doctrine of equity is wonderful and immense. Another issue that we need again to appreciate and acknowledge in the work of Salmon is that his dedication to the problem of justice is quite explicit. But Salmond also makes it so realistic, simplistic, the understanding of the jurisprudence. And in this case, he has made a huge contribution to the systematic understanding of the jurisprudence, systematic jurisprudence. He has also made a remark and a distinct understanding of the historical jurisprudence as well as he has made a huge and, and colossus contribution to the understanding of the critical jurisprudence. I invite all of you, those who are able to get hold of the work by Judge John William Salmond, and this is going to help us as the learning outcome, especially for those who are studying jurisprudence for a university degree in law, or those who are studying the jurisprudence to improve themselves in the practice of law and the general knowledge of law. This is addressed to professionals, to the academics, but also to the students of law. Thank you for being here. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. If you have, please remember to press the notification bell. So any new publication of similar video 
will get to your channel. That is good. Bye for now. Thank you.